got diluted before it got to flow. Want to swap now that they're cooled off? Right. <laughs> I'm going to go for another cancer stick while we're producing more HHO. That's working really well. I got oh, rubber. Yeah. It sure is. And the stick. What you want to sell this for? That's yours. Take it right on. Well, that's the first. There we go. Version 1.1. 1. 1. This is its frequency is of yourself. Yeah. And the way I was trained to do that in conventional electronics is I take a signal generator, which I've been. Remember, I told you I got that chip based one I want to throw together and still have it. But take a signal generator. And you pump various frequencies for it through it and measure the voltage across it, put it on a graph, and that'll tell you your spike frequency. Absolutely. And then we start playing with this. Because this supposedly is able to run a car, as is, you know, a huge wind chime size type cylindrical fuel cell, so what it's designed for. But that doesn't matter. But it's it's designed to hook up to a fuel cell that can um, basically power a car. So this stands Stanley Meyer device, electronics thing, yep. if you had a huge cylinder filled with a lot more electrodes yes. with the same amount of power, you'd get more gas coming out. Well, well, that's you probably would use a little more power and there are YouTube videos on it where the guy has up to 18 plates stacked in a brick shape. Positive, yep. negative, positive, negative, positive, okay. negative, positive, yep. negative, nine each side fed from opposites and he runs water through it. and it kicks up gas like you would believe. I'm not sure right. what the actual power rating he's spending there is, but I'm sure it's over 100 watts. Okay, well, but he's using the same kind of electronic Yeah, device. he's using Pulse DC, yeah. absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I did read somewhere where uh, adding fuel cell, adding electrodes to fuel cell, yep. you put in another set, it doubles your gas, but does not double your current. You put in a third one, it doesn't triple it, and supposedly you get to a point where you max out on your current, now every electrode you add is free. So it's almost as though you'll create a stack and the current will keep going up to a max. And then it stays there and okay. you keep adding electrodes and no, no more current gain. Or no more current. And but that's but where you I get more gas it. coming out. And you, yeah, each time you add more electrodes you get more gas. But okay. at a certain point you can add more and it's free now. Right. Now I don't know if that's wow. true, that's another thing I've got to test. Check it out. And I hey. thought the razor blades would be the way to test that. Hey, Ron, there's even hydrogen coming off the alligator clip on my side. I wouldn't doubt it. Look at that, man. Because it is, it is part of, the, uh, it is part of the, the cell. It is part of the electrode. Yeah, it's exposed. And, you know, and you're right. I'm taking a look, good look at this. I don't see near the brown crud that you get yeah. with the razor blades. That's way, way, way better. And there's actually a little bit of tape in there. The ones that are holding the separators yeah. together? Probably not as much as what we have okay, in the Okay, clear back while I blow this one more time. You know, not that far back, but just, well, you I just know. I just want to get water on the lens. <laughs> <laughs> I got water on this accessory. It's absolutely on the splatter lens. zone around here. <laughs> it, it figures out that there's so much gas, puts the igniter we're just sitting here. Yeah. Bang! Peas bang, bang, yeah. bang, there's our indicator. As soon as you get something here. And we see, well, the bang you need a little optical trip right across the middle, and as soon as it becomes obscured by bubble, it piezos across the yeah. hole. And yeah. Pat. <laughs> cool. That's great, Paul, because I could not achieve that. I tried fucking everything, and that was like, my absolute pleasure. You were there, Rob. I had the <laughs> match stick, and I was standing away, and now, what would happen? Why wasn't that? Uh, why wasn't it igniting? Or uh... because it was diluting with air. Yeah, I had too much air in there. Paul filled it up a lot higher, and can my I, tube is too big and too long. Can I let you in on one other design factor sure. here? By all means. It has to do with the force of the gas coming up. You know how a water level works. That's why I've tried to keep these two water yeah. levels as same as a, as I can. So and your are different, tubes. right? Yeah. yeah, and a very short tube, so there's no dilution in air. But so that way, there isn't a lot of hydraulic pressure to overcome between the two either. Which is what mine was trying to do. Yeah, exactly. Woo! I love it. I'm, so I'm now, <laughs> that's what you that's what we can power our homes and our cars with. And the okay. output is steam. I mean, every time you blast that, you're getting steam, basically. And that's the biggest level of explosive risk that you're ever going to have in your system. Is like a couple of cubic centimeters of HHO. Yeah, because we're going to be drawn off it and burning it. On demand. Yeah. And I did notice that playing with this, if I start messing with the main oscillator, I can control the flow. 
you know, I can control the gas flow somewhat. I mean, you could also, you know, well, basically you're pulsing the DC. And if you pulse it slower, get to a point where you're really pulsing slow, then the gas generation will drop. I'm betting the recordings are going to be awesome because the mic is on the table. Oh, man, people's ears are going to yep. be <laughs> No, there's going to be a lot of low end to the pop, which is really nice. I'm yeah. sure it's great. We should hear from the guest. The guest should actually log in as a real identity, and then you can type in the window and tell us how it sounds. That would be cool. <laughs> is Stanley Meyer the guy who, who made the, who's now selling these welders? Myers, no, Myers no. was killed. Yeah, Myers oh. around. Who's he's the guy down in Florida who's got a, Denny Klein. a welding yeah. device? Yeah. Denny Klein. A tor torch welder yeah. that, yeah. that that yeah. runs yeah. by yeah. generating yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. HHO. Yeah. Denny Klein. Denny Klein. Yeah. Okay. Okay, here's another thing I meant to talk about with HHO. Okay, what do we do with, you know, I think, with the losses you're getting? using this and the amount of current that dropped using this, I think there is somewhat of a game, but of course getting the frequency correct, you know, find the resonance of that cell, doing those tests I was talking about, then adjusting this to get that resonance. This circuit may not even be sensitive enough. Sensitive enough. Uh, one thing I'm thinking of doing is replacing those oscillators with a better oscillator, getting rid of that mark space adjustment because that's just basically telling me it's a crappy oscillator. You should be able to adjust the frequency and the square wave stays constant. This thing you adjust the frequency, oh, the square wave is all out of kilter, so I've got to play with mark space. So, yeah, you're seeing the electronic variables so, yeah, that you can improve, improve on, yeah. and then there's also the, the electrophysical here. Yeah. Like right now we're using a two-piece helical coil <coughs> And like I keep saying, let's make it official for the record. Next prototype we bring to the meeting is going to be a quadruple. There's going to be a positive inside a negative, inside a positive, inside a negative, just like the four razor blades. Okay, so not, not four stack, but in intertwined. Right, just, just like, like this one is one inside the next. Similar so yeah, you have positive thing. inside, negative inside, positive yeah. inside, negative. All the coils, same axis. Just like we were doing with the razor blade in the sense. That's the key. Okay. One package. Yeah. Okay, question. How are you going to solve the problem of the resonance uh, optimization, and how long will it take to do that, and what equipment do you need? Okay, well, I've got a signal generator kit that I just got to throw together, and to me it doesn't look like this is in the gigahertz or anything, so it's an audio signal generator. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll hook it up to that, to that coil, Basically, it's a coil and a capacitor in one. It's a tank circuit. Everything has a natural resonance. And I'll do the test. And at a certain frequency, I'll see that the, the Q of the circuit goes up. The, it actually starts amplifying a little mm -hmm. bit. And when you find that sweet spot, then I start tackling this thing to get that particular frequency within its adjustability. Mm -hmm. Of course, I don't want to dedicate it to that frequency because maybe if we get... Uh, some kind of um, coating on, on if you change the, the size of the container you'll change the resonance yes yeah, so yeah. you gotta basically build and then, then it might change too because right. as coating builds on the electrodes and that, it might change and well that's what I want to check out next because we had this thing running for a good half hour and that looks great and yeah I want to go empty Mr. Big out yeah, here and bring out the idea. DNA coil yeah, let's, and let's inspect, inspect. It yeah. Yes, we'll bring some more paper towel. Okay, while you're doing that, I'll, uh, i got a couple of mags here. Okay, we're, I'm, I'm running, out of, um, running out of memory on this uh, digital camera. So this is uh, the Vancouver Amateur Inventors and Gadgeteers January 2008 meeting. Uh, we're just uh, going to end the recording and we'll... On January 14th. Now you can also watch the this whole thing on, um, we're going to archive the, uh, the recording and you can see uh, almost all of it I would think. Yep, it's on, blog, on www.blogtv.com forward slash show 15274. That's the whole website. I've got a